25 Lightroom keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time to save me time. Hi and welcome to episode 130 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. Nope, definitely no Google in this episode. Right, here is the answer a bit. Here are 25 Lightroom keyboard shortcuts that I use. Now, I've listed these during an editing session. It's not it's not produced from a Google search. These are the ones that I actually use. And if you don't use Lightroom, don't worry. Whatever you use will have similar. And you can take away from this the fact that... Oh, text message coming in. Sorry. They're there for you. So I've got a list of 25. Here we go. I'll get through these quickly. Number one. I'm not going to say number one, by the way. So just trust me on this. There are 25. So starting with, and this is in the order in which I use them, actually. Well, I do edit in a strange way, to be fair. First one, P for pick. I use P for pick to quickly choose the photos that I'm thinking about editing. That's all it is. It's a quick P for pick. X for reject. A quick way to sort the rubbish out. That's stuff that's going to get deleted straight away. I don't want it, don't need it, get rid. U, that cancels a flag, either a pick or a reject. D for develop. Now this takes me straight into the develop module and it takes me straight to the point where I can start editing a photo. M for map, takes me straight to the excellent map module. Much maligned by others, but loved by me. R for crop tool, takes me straight to the crop tool. And when I'm in the crop tool, if I press O, that scrolls through the different crop overlays. And it's a brilliant, brilliant thing. G for grid takes me to the grid view in the library mode. I spend a lot of time flick flacking between G for grid and D for develop. A lot of time. Now, two good old faithful generic universal keyboard shortcuts. Easy for me to say. Control C, copy stuff. Control V, paste the stuff that I've copied. Shift tab, quickly get rid of or bring back the side panels, giving you a bigger photo to look at. Control A, select all the photos. Right arrow key, used on the sliders to give me fine control. Normally, adjustments in increments of five, but there are some other ones where it is a bit different. 14, left arrow key, the same, but the other way around. So you press a key to the right and you add an amount of adjustment. Use the left key to take away. Brilliant, easy, and it's quite often it's easier than using the mouse and trying to click on that little blobby bit in the middle. 15, home, takes me to the first photo in a collection or folder. End, takes me to the last photo. Well, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? Page up, many uses, including in the spot removal tool. Page down, many uses, including in the spot removal tool. I'll touch on that one here, actually. Go to the spot removal tool, zoom in to 100%, press home. Check that screen that you're looking at, then press page down. It'll take you to the next one and it'll keep on going till you get to the other corner. Brilliant. K, new mask. Takes me straight to a new mask. Q, spot removal. Takes me straight to the spot removal tool I mentioned earlier. W for white balance. Takes me straight to the white balance tool. Y, before and after. Why not? A quick look at what I've done. Use this all the time. Not sure why it's so far down the list. F, full image. It gives me the full image on screen with my monitor. It's a big image. F2, when I want to change a file name. Spacebar, zoom in, zoom out. Dead handy. Right, that was the 25. Now for the talky bit. As I said, if you don't use Lightroom, I'm sorry, but whatever you use, find out what keyboard shortcuts are available to you and learn them. These save me loads of time and they help help me to work much more quicker. Help me to work much more quicker. Now, I'm sure a better way of saying that will be help me to work much more quickly. I'm going to update that on my script because that's quite poor, isn't it? I updated that to quicklier. (laughs) Quicklier. Actually, that might be a word. I'm not sure. So they save me loads of time and help me to work much quickly. (laughs) Work much quickly. Work much more quickly. I'll just adjust that. I'll I'll cut out the pause in the middle. Don't worry. (laughs) I just spoke more wrong. Oh dear. And now I've lost my place. Right, here we go. I found it. (laughs) Sorry, I lost my place completely. I just couldn't find it for the life of me. They saved me loads of time and helped me to work much more quickly. That was well worth the wait, wasn't it? 
and I've used these so much they are pretty much instinctive. When I get into the zone with my editing, my fingers blaze around the keyboard. Yeah, all right, you know what I mean. But when you're sussing out which shortcuts to use, make a note of them. I mean, sure, have the full list of them, but don't try to remember all of them. I've told you the ones that I use, and I didn't pick them off a list. I wrote down the ones that I used during a real editing session. If I tried to remember all the Lightroom keyboard shortcuts, I'd, I'd probably just confuse myself. There are way, way too many of them. I mean, sure, I had a copy of the full list of keyboard shortcuts to start with, and I started off with the list, and I started to use the ones that I wanted to. And that's what I've built on, using the keyboard shortcuts I want to to help me. That's the list that you see. 25 is plenty for me. There's no way I can remember any more than that. And yeah, it sounds like a, a nice round number, doesn't it? I didn't aim to get to 25 and stop there. I basically wrote down all the keyboard shortcuts I used in an editing session. And it turned out to be 25. I mean, there might be the odd one that I haven't listed, but these are the 25 that I actually use. And, and there are also some really cool things in these keyboard shortcuts which really do help you. When I'm doing something with the sliders, which you're meant to drag with the mouse pointer, I use the left and right arrow key sometimes to get instant controllable movement of the sliders. When I'm correcting verticals, for example, this is dead handy, and I use this to gradually increase and decrease the exposure and other tonal things. I mean, anything with a slider, you can use the arrow keys to adjust if you want to, that is. I find it gives me better control. It's more precise. It's, it's a really handy thing to have. And it gives you a change from all that precise clicking and what have you with the mouse so give it a go i mean whatever software you use to edit your photos keyboard shortcuts will help you and they'll save you tons of time they also give you a break from the mouse giving you regular changes of position which is a good thing i've talked about this in the past spend too much time in one position and you'll get postural problems and when you get to my kind of age it's it's <laughs> it's much more of an issue for all you whippersnappers out there but to move your hand position from being on the mouse to on the keyboard, it's good because it's changing the angle and it's changing how things operate. And it's actually a good thing to do. OK, then, short episode alert. I'm done here. I'm determined to get through this one in less than 10 minutes. Next, next episode is not looking good, to be honest with you. Right, what do I do? Well, I told you that. Let's move on. I'm in a hurry. Learn to use the keyboard shortcuts that will help you edit photos more efficiently. That simple. Next episode, Photography Explained Podcast, episode 131. How can I improve my editing workflow? Who want to know what I do? That should be a question mark, shouldn't it? Not an exclamation mark. Now, in this episode, I'm going to tell you exactly what my workflow for editing photos is from start to finish. If this one makes it in less than 10 minutes, great. This one won't. <laughs> this is looking like being more like half an hour, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. I'm not really sure how long it's going to take, but I'll try and get it done in... No, I won't get it done in less than 10 minutes. There is no chance of that. If you have a photography question you would like me to answer in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the relevant details, just head over to photographyexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. This is a great place to go to find out more about me and my podcast and also find ways that you can help me. And I'd love to hear from you, even if you just want to say hi. Well, this episode was powered by, wait for it, splendid reheated pizza from Saturday night washed down with lots of water. Well, it's hot here today. Not a cheese sandwich day either, which is a bit odd on a hot day. Cheese sandwiches are normally perfect. Anyway, no, I'm sipping water, sat here in my homemade acoustic... Oh, nearly made it then, didn't I? Nope, I'm sipping water, sat down... Nope. <laughs> I am sipping water now, sat here in my homemade acoustically cushioned reporting and recording emporium. I think it's the way I've written it was rubbish, so I'm going to have to change that. I've been trying to tweak things and make them better and look where it's getting me. OK, I'm done. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast, it says here, and for giving me 10 minutes of your valuable time. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, stay safe. Cheers from me, Rick.